<clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, this is Kelly Champion. I'm your instructor for your uh, HDEV 348 child development class. First off, let me apologize profusely um, for doing this video with just my picture and then just a screen share. I, I have no idea what is going on with Zoom tonight. Um, every time I try to start a video and I am using my webcam, um, the image, like me sitting there, is jumping all over the place. I don't even know what is going on. Um, so I sincerely apologize um, that I'm doing the video this way. Um, hopefully it'll resolve itself. I'm going to try to restart a couple of times and update Zoom and whatever, but um, hopefully that will resolve itself. But um, other videos that are already posted in your Canvas page do have me physically in them. Um, so, you know, we'll just kind of work through things and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So anyway, welcome to class. Um, I'm just going to chat here for a second and then I'm going to jump to your Canvas page so I can show you a few things and then I'll get off and let you get on your way. Um, so first of all, welcome to class. Um, you know, this is not my first time at the rodeo at all. Um, this is actually the end of my 20th academic year of teaching. Um, so I've been doing this a really long time. This class I've taught pretty consistently since the beginning. Um, so this is not a new class to me at all. Um, the teaching online is not new to me at all. Um, I actually brought the first online, fully online class to the human development and psych department here at um, Rockford University. And that was a couple of years pre-COVID. That was, oh gee, probably the 2017, 18, something like that. Um, so anyway, I, yeah, this is not new to me. So hopefully um, you'll find things easy to follow and you'll find the class interesting and not too overwhelming. Um, that is most definitely my goal. Um, while still um, making sure that you learn the course material. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead here and share my screen. Um, and what I'm going to show you is your Canvas page. Now, I apologize that this looks a little bit different than when you log on. Um, I'm actually doing this the night before class starts and the night before all of your modules are open. So I can't, I, things look just a little bit different than they will when you log on, but you'll get the general idea. Um, so first of all, on, you know, it's Human Development 348. On the left side of your uh, Canvas homepage here, um, you will find a tab syllabus right here. And if you click on it, there's two things there. Um, first of all, is my actual syllabus. Now, I'm not going to go through everything in there. Um, you can certainly read that, and I encourage you to do so. Um, I will talk about major uh, course policies and things as I go through all of this stuff. The other thing that you will notice about this is you have a course summary. So when you forget when something's due, if you go to syllabus, the course summary is here. And if you, you can just hover over it and you can see that, oh, look, on February 4th, we have a discussion board and a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting that are due. On Saturday, February 11th, you have, you know, one through four smart books, exam one and application work one due. And on Saturday, March 4th, when it moves, um, you have these things due. And Saturday, April 1st, you have these things due and the 15th and the 20th. So it it lays it out for you when things are due. So those of you that are planner dependent, um, there you go. Um, the own, nope, actually everything is there. So um, you can go ahead and plan your life. Now, if you kind of pay attention, you know, you have some stuff due the 4th, but you have the major things due the 11th but then it's Saturday, March 4th and Saturday, April 1st and, you know, a couple other things in there. And then, so you, there's not stuff due every week. Um, let me go to the home here and I will show you how things are laid out. So you're watching this video, which means you paid attention to module zero, um, which is this, which is where you found um, in this page yet when it pops up. Um, it's not on that page because I'm recording it right now. Um, so again, things will look a little bit different. Um, but there, let's see here. So 
the first thing I wanted you to do, um, but here's, here's where my intro video was, but everybody in the class needs to meet with me one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom for 10 minutes um, at some point before February 4th. Now you can, I wanted you to click on this sign up genius and go in and pick your time. Now you guys are not due until February 4th. Um, I have another set of classes that I teach at Kishwaukee College, and they are using the same Sign Up Genius link. Their stuff is due the 28th of January. So you will you will see that the um, Sign Up Genius is only through um, January 28th right now. I want to force them into those dates. Um, you certainly can sign up for something. Go right ahead. Um, but um, I will be opening things between January 29th and February 4th. So if you want to wait a little bit, you can do that. Um, but in any event, you're going to sign up. It's going to send you an email confirming your appointment. It'll send you a reminder. It'll give you the Zoom link in that email. And really all we're going to do is touch base because I'm not in front of you. Um, remember that this is a 100% online asynchronous course, which means we do not meet on a scheduled day or time. I do not see you in the classroom. You work at your own pace within the due dates. Um, so I would like to know my students. So I do require two um, one on one Zooms in the semester. This first one, like I said, you'll sign up for um, in that module zero. The second one um, will be after spring break. And for those of you that have an A or a B at that time, you will not be required to meet with me again. Um, anybody with a C, D, or F, I will require it. Um, and again, that second that second Zoom is really going to be to check in and talk about what you need to do to make sure that you you have the highest possible grade that you can. So I will we'll deal with that second one later. But please go ahead and find a time on here and sign up. Um, and then start here. Of course, you are doing that because you are watching this video. And then uh, go on to the information about how to register your code. Now, this um, YouTube video right here is a code that, or excuse me, is a video that talks about how to register your code. I did it for the Human Development 215 class, but it is exactly the same process. So there was no point in me creating another video. Um, so when it says Human Development 215, ignore that. The information is the same. Uh, remember, you are not purchasing a textbook, you are purchasing a code, and that code will give you access to McGraw-Hill Connect for this class. You will do most of your coursework in that, so yes, it is required. Um, let's see here. This video kind of tell you a little bit about that too, but um, please make sure that you purchase your code either direct from our bookstore at Radford University or purchase it through our course. And this uh, video here talking about registering your code, it will tell you how to do it. But honestly, it's very simple. Find on the left-hand side here, find the connect spot, click on it, register your email and follow the prompts. Um, if you're gonna purchase through class, then just click on it and follow the prompts, pay at the end and you're done. If you're gonna purchase through the bookstore, Keep anything that they give you, whether they give you a receipt, if they give you a cardboard thing, if you do it you know, online and they send you an email, keep everything you are looking for a code. It's an access code that you're going to enter um, to register uh, to get access to connect. Okay. Now, if you are stuck and you are financially need a little bit more time to purchase your code, you may follow this, this connect link here, follow this video. It will show you how. Um, and you may register for two weeks of free access. Anybody can do that. Um, when you go through, it's a little bit confusing. It it almost says like, do you want to purchase? No, you don't want to purchase. You want free access. Um, it'll give it to you for two weeks. I cannot guarantee how long that will be there. It's usually there through the first week. But like next week, I don't know that you will have the ability to get two weeks free access. So if you th even think that you're going to do that, sign up for it, you know, right away, get the two weeks free access because then you can start working. Once your two weeks ends, the system will not let you log in again. And at that point, you will, it'll prompt you and it'll say, do you want to purchase or do you want to enter a code? And you just do whatever you want to do and go on. Yes, it will save your work. So don't panic about that. Once you do all that, I also want you to watch the video about CBL 
or community-based learning. This was the information I sent you um, a week and a half or so ago about volunteer work. Um, you guys need to volunteer 10 hours at, during the semester, um, and you must volunteer with children under the age of, I think, 13, um, 12 or 13. So you need to volunteer with kids. For you, the easiest place to go is the Discovery Center. Um, they are always looking for volunteers. Um, if you're not from here, Discovery Center is not very far. Um, it's just downtown. Um, and, but you can't walk there, but they, they are always looking for help, um, always, and they've been good to our students. So that's where I would send you if you, um, need someplace to volunteer. But if you teach Sunday school, if you go to church and you volunteer in your nursery, that works. Okay. So don't be, you know, don't overthink that. Um, the community-based learning video will tell you more about that, but you can also check with Jace on campus. Um, it's the Jane Adams Center. Um, they know of places in town that, um, are good to our students and that would, um, be willing to work with you. Those hours done early in the semester, because you know, darn well at the end, you're going to be super busy. Okay. So once you get through module zero, then you go on to module one, two, three, four, and five. Now don't let that fool you. Um, yes, there are five modules, but you have a lot of work to do in those modules. So module one goes from today, January 17th, big grouping of things to do before then. But, um, and, um, so the way that this is laid out, um, sorry, that cat just cracked me up. That's why I put it in there. Um, the way this is laid out is the way that every module will be laid out for you. It's a module and then it goes to a page. So this is module one where we talk about the biological beginnings. Here are all of your PowerPoint notes for this chapter. These are from the textbook publisher. So they're not mine and I'll tell you they are insanely long, but they are helpful. Oh, I see, I forgot to put something in there. Um, I forgot to add your smart books, my apologies and your exam. So I will fix that. Um, your My mini lecture is here. So um, don't, um, I will do a mini lecture for most sections, but remember it is a mini lecture. It is not meant to be a substitute for reading the book or doing any of that. Um, so you have to do those things as well. Your smart books, when I fix this, they will be here and it will link to chapters one, two, three, and four. Your application work, this is an assignment that's there. And then your exam will be linked right here. I apologize. I don't know why I can see what that looks like. Mm, sorry. Hopefully I linked it in module two. We'll see. Sorry, it's just uh, taking a minute to open. Okay, so see what I did here in module two? I fed you the links for your smart books, your application work, your discussion board, and then know what I did. And I just forgot to go back and add those in module one. Two. Um, if there's videos or whatever, I will give you that. So the nice thing is you always come back to module one to find all of the work that you need for this module, for this section. Um, you don't have to go searching for assignments. Okay. Um, now when the smart books are in here, um, I want to talk about that for a minute. So, um, smart books are what you do is you're going to click on them and it's going to jump you to your online textbook. And what you need to do is read and answer the questions. Um, now I know, sorry, that cat is super annoying. So let's go for many semesters time and time again, it is easier to read and then do the questions, not don't try to do the questions as you are going. Um, it just, it's easier to read and then answer the questions. Um, when you're doing smart book assignments, you need to make sure that you are doing them all and doing them completely. Be honest. If you don't know what something is, say it that you don't know what it is. Um, the, the smart book system will take you to that part in the textbook where it is. I do not see what you do. I don't care if you miss all the questions. Well, I do, but I don't care if you miss all the questions. I don't see what you get right and wrong. I just see if you completed it or not. Um, so be honest, because as you go this semester, you will have smart books for each section and it, the system learns what you know. So for example, if you don't do smart books, one, two, three, and four, and you think you're going to start with smart books five, you are going to have an insane amount of stuff thrown at you because that system doesn't know what you already know. You know nothing because you haven't done one, two, three, and four. If you legitimately do one, two, three, four, and on and on and on, and you do them and you do them and, you know, until you get through all of the concepts, you've earned a 10 out of 10, 
Um, the system learns what you learn. So for example, if you never understand Freud, then when Freud comes up again, the system will send you more questions about it to help you remember what you need to remember about Freud. If you always understand Piaget, then when Piaget comes up again, the system is going to send you less. Not doing smart books hurts you in more than one way. It hurts you because you don't earn those points, but then it also hurts you because um, the system doesn't know what you know because you're telling the system you don't know anything. So it actually gives you more work once you start one. So make sure that you are doing smart books completely, okay? Um, and then your exams, you have um, multiple choice exams. They are obviously online. You will, every student gets 60 minutes. You get one access, only one. Um, and your everything is always due at 11.59 p.m., whether it's an exam or smart books or whatever. I am telling you that, for example, on February 11th, smart books one, two, three, four, why are those there? They're not in the, I don't know. One, two, three, and four, and exam one, and application work one, exactly at 11.59 p.m., those links will, well, the exam link will close and the application work will close and smart books will automatically grade. Um, you cannot go into your exam at 11.30 p.m. and expect to get an hour to do it. You will get 29 minutes. Everything kicks out at 11.59. So do not wait until the last minute to upload or to finish. And if you do that, do not email me two minutes later at 12.01 saying the link was gone. Yep, it was. And guess what? You missed it. Um, and that's a big zero. So be responsible. Get things done early. Um, don't wait till the last minute. Um, please don't wait till the last minute. Okay. Um, what you will also... I know I was going somewhere with this too. Um, let me go here. What you will also notice is January 17th will unlock January 17th. All of your modules will unlock on Tuesday, the first day of class, which means everything is open day one. So yes, if you finish the work in module one on February 8th or January 30th, and you want to go on to module two stuff, by all means go. Yes, you may work ahead. The only thing you cannot do ahead of time is research week um, because we wait for the upper division psych and human development courses. They have to do their research projects and get everything set up. So Dr. Lynch doesn't send us those links until a day or two before research week opens. That's the only assignment you cannot do ahead of time. So now don't rush through it. But yes, you can conceivably get everything done and you could conceivably be done before May 12th. Don't push that. But you know, take your time on things um, and do what you need to do. I know that I'm forgetting something. Oh, let's go back here real quick um, to just, um, you know, what the syllabus looks like. And you have three weeks, four weeks to get work done. Um, don't email me at, at 1150 saying you need more time. I'm going to get to extend work. So you're just adding more work to it. Um, I'm really sorry that my, that my, there we go. My computer's being just goofy today. Um, so there's my, this is my syllabus for you. Um, oh, no, it is not. Oh, yes, it is. It is, but I need to fix something. It's got the wrong dates on it. See, this is why we do things ahead of time. Um, and this is why I do these videos because I'm always catching something that I did. Yep, I see what I did. Um, I'm always, I see what I did. I needed to, I needed to re-upload this, but um, anyway, so I, um, Anyway, th this stuff didn't change. Um, when you are, when we work through things here as well, um, you have 800 points in the class. Um, if you earn 743 points, or no, I'm sorry, let's do, if you earn 719 points at the end of the semester, good job, you earn a B plus. That is not rounded up. I never, ever, ever round up, ever. Um, the, you know, if you earn 720 points, you earn an A minus. I wouldn't round you down to a B plus. So I wouldn't round a B plus up to an A. Okay. Um, so I will fix this. Um, you'll, you'll see it fixed. Um, not really sure what I did there. Um, I will fix this for you and re-upload it. So by the time you're looking at it, it will be accurate. My apologies on that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know, I'm even annoyed. Though, um, so I know this is hard to listen to and I appreciate you sticking out till the end. So I'm going to stop sharing now.
Um, so yeah, so that's it. Please reach out to me if you have questions, if you have problems. Um, keep in mind that I do work a full-time job here in Rockford um, at a junior high high school. So I am in, I'm in school uh, during the school day. Um, I do check email when I can at work, but um, most often I'm going to be able to Zoom with you um, and I'll answer longer emails and stuff after four o'clock and on the weekends. Um, so if I wouldn't have said that, you would not have known that. Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is, but, um, quite honestly, I've never had the, I've never had a problem with the student not being able to get a hold of me. Um, I always reply to emails pretty much as soon as I get them, as long as I see them. Um, I do sleep. So, you know, I don't answer stuff overnight. I do not have canvas or our school email on my phone. I don't do that. Um, so, you know, but that isn't going to be an issue. So anyway, um, reach out if you need something, um, please you go ahead and use the, um, the inbox option there, um, on our canvas page and send me an email if you need something. Um, otherwise you need to let me know what you need. I will assume that you are fine unless I hear from you. And then I will see you all on your individual zooms before February 4th. That is all. Have a good day.